I'm sure it's gonna blow a lot of minds, you know, make people's heads explode. But we'll say it right now, if you are pinching a wide tire onto a narrow wheel, you are leaving time on the table. It's been a question or, or an issue that has kind of, you know, plagued racers and enthusiast drivers for as long as there have been racers and enthusiast drivers. It's that relationship between tire width and wheel width and how those things affect lap times, because that's what we're all worried about, right, is, is what's going to give me the fastest lap. And really, there's never been any kind of definitive testing up to this point. Um, you know, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence or people that just test one combination versus another and say, hey, in this situation, this one was faster, uh, but really no thorough testing on it. So that's what we set out to do. We're using a single tire. It's the new Bridgestone Potenza RE71RS, and we have three different widths. We have a 215 45 17, a 225 45 17, and a 245 40 17. And we have a single model wheel, the NK RPF1, in three different sizes. We have a 17 by seven, a 17 by eight, and a 17 by nine. And we're going to run every possible combination of those. 215s on sevens, eights, and nines. 225s on sevens, eights, and nines. And 245s on sevens, eights, and nines. It's gonna be three days of testing. We're gonna run in the dry and the wet so we can get some answers for you to try to put some hard data on this. Jumping right into the dry track results, we started the test with the 215 section with tires on the seven inch wide wheels. The first comment that came to mind for all of our drivers was how easy it was to drive. At the limit, it felt planted and stable and it didn't really punish mistakes. This combination leaned toward understeer and the rear end would tolerate full throttle without much movement. The flip side is that our drivers wanted some movement at the rear to help rotate through turns. The front end didn't feel as responsive or as immediate as the other specs, and in general it felt slightly down on overall traction. Since our test took multiple days, we needed a way to compare data from one day to the next, so we included a control tire in each day of our testing. In the results chart, the control tire is set as the baseline, and anything slower than the control will be below the baseline, and anything faster will be above the baseline. Looking at the results for average lap times, we can see the 215 on the 7 wasn't as fast as the control tire. Our drivers felt that since it was so forgiving, it may be a great option for someone who's just getting started, but more experienced drivers could definitely find a faster combination. Moving to the 215 on an 8-inch wheel, our drivers appreciated the additional turn-in response that gave the front end a more direct and confident feel. The increased wheel width also made the rear axle more engaging, and now the vehicle would rotate more readily. It wasn't quite as balanced as we would have liked though, and sometimes the movement at the rear felt more like wasted motion than a useful tool. We can see the change in behavior resulted in a nice improvement in lap times, though it still isn't up to the baseline set by the control tire. A 9-inch wheel is outside of the recommended rim width range for a 215-45-17 tire, so the 215 on the 9 is the first combination in our test that's a track use only fitment, and it shouldn't be driven on public roads. On the track, it was our driver's subjective favorite of all the 215s. The steering was very quick and crisp, with direct response and strong front end authority. The rear axle provided nice rotation and felt very settled all the way up to its traction limit. When it did finally let go, the breakaway was abrupt. It was easy to catch and bring back, but it was still the least forgiving 215 combination. As you can see, our times kept getting faster as the tire had more and more support from the wider wheel, and the stretch 215 on the 9 is the only 215mm setup that matched the pace of our control tire. So let's move on to the 225s and see what happens to our trend. A 225-45-17 tire has a rim width range of 7 inches to 8.5 inches, so it's not quite to the point of being pinched on the 7 inch wide wheel. And according to our measurements, the 225 has a little over half an inch more tread width than the 215. That extra width combined with reasonable support from the wheel resulted in a small improvement in our lap times, and it was the first combination that was faster than the control tire. Similar to what we found with the 215 on the 7, the 225 on the 7 inch wide wheel felt stable at the rear and it would take significant throttle without stepping out, but that also meant its handling balance leaned toward understeer. Additionally, it felt softer and slower to react to steering inputs, and it was the only 225 combination where our drivers felt like they might get a little behind in the slalom. Subjectively, the 225 on the 8-inch wheel felt the most balanced, like that's how it was designed from the very beginning. Turn-in was sharp and the steering was precise, with a nice buildup of effort as cornering load increased. The front to rear balance was mostly neutral and it offered just enough rotation to be useful without feeling nervous or unsettled. 
With that additional support of the extra inch of wheel width, we saw a significant improvement in lap times with the 225 on the 8 over any of the other wheel and tire combinations we'd run so far. The balance behavior and impressive traction worked together to deliver a bigger jump in lap time than the smaller, incremental gains we'd seen up to that point. If the 225 on the 8 felt the most balanced, the 225 on the 9 felt the most athletic. This is another stretched application that should be reserved for track use only, and like the 215 on the 9, it was a bit edgy and abrupt at the absolute limit, but that didn't bother our drivers at all. The 225 on the 9 was arguably our favorite combination. The steering was so responsive that changes in direction felt almost immediate, yet it was still precise and easy to dial in exactly the right amount of input. Even though breakaway at the rear was somewhat sudden, the limits felt higher and it was stable right up until the driver asked too much. We have a saying at the tire rack that what feels good isn't always fast, and what's fast doesn't always feel good. But the 225 and the 9 felt good and it was fast. We managed another noticeable drop in lap times, and we were now significantly faster than the control tire. The 245 on the 7 was our first truly pinched combination and it's outside of the recommended 8 inch to 9.5 inch rim width range, so once again, this should be reserved for track use only. In general, it felt a little soft and wallowy, with steering that was a touch slow and imprecise. It allowed our drivers to get back to the throttle very quickly without stepping out the rear, but it would push at the front, so we had to ensure the car was pointed in the right direction first. Up to now, our lap times had continually gotten faster and faster as we added more tire width and better support from the wider wheels. So let's take a look at what happened when we maximized the width of the tire without providing proper wheel support. Yikes. Our lap times got significantly worse. In fact, this combination was the second slowest of the entire test, which really demonstrates that stuffing the widest tire you can fit under your fenders won't be the fastest solution if it doesn't have enough wheel width. Subjectively, the 245 on the 8 was wonderful to drive, and it was essentially tied with the 225 on the 9 as our team's favorite setup. It had the right combination of traction, responsiveness, and rotation, and the grip felt very impressive, yet the vehicle was still free enough to get it to move when and where the driver wanted. It was balanced and controllable and just very satisfying all around. Unfortunately, that satisfying feel didn't translate to incredibly quick laps. Remember, what feels good isn't always fast. The 245 and the 8 was a small step above the control tire. It was faster than all the 215s and certainly the 245 on the 7, but it couldn't match the pace of any of the 225s. With the 9-inch wheel, we were finally getting near the upper limit of the 245's rim width range, but we still weren't there and the tires definitely weren't stretched. With this setup, our normally tail-happy BRZs felt a little tight and pushy. The traction was impressive, and it was very stable, so our drivers could carry a lot of speed through sweeping turns and get back to throttle very quickly. The response, though, was a little slow, so it didn't feel as quick or eager through rapid transitions. So now the question we've been waiting to answer the whole time, what was faster? The 245 on the 9 is basically the most wheel and tire we can fit on our BRZs, but the tire doesn't have as much wheel support as it could. The 225 on the 9 obviously has less tire width, but it's very well supported. So let's see what the stopwatch says. It was a very, very close competition between the two. With some additional suspension tuning to help dial out the understeer and maximize the 245 on the 9, it might be faster. But on our stock BRZs, on our track, the 225-45-17 tires on 9-inch wheels was the fastest combination in the drive. Bigger picture though, and probably the more important lesson to take away, Looking at the bar chart, we can see the clear trend that more wheel support for your tire is a more significant factor than tire width alone. So instead of immediately fixating on trying to fit the widest tire you possibly can, it would be more beneficial to focus on properly matching your tires to your wheels. The subjective behavior in the wet followed a very similar pattern to what we found in the dry. The 215 on the 7 inch wheel had the slowest turn in of the group and also the most gradual breakaway. It felt very forgiving, but not as athletic or capable. Moving up to the 8 inch wide wheel brought better front end authority, but also a sharper edge at the limit of traction. The 9 inch wide wheel just further emphasized those characteristics. The steering was the fastest to respond and the most precise, but it was also the hardest combination to drive consistently. We can see in the objective results that the 215 on the 8 set the fastest average lap time, and the 215 on the 7, while it was easy to drive, ultimately wasn't as capable. 
It could be argued that the 215 on the 9 was faster than the 215 on the 8. It had the fastest single lap of the test, but since it was so edgy and difficult to drive, it fell just a step behind in average laps. Still, all three of the 215 combinations were noticeably faster than our benchmark tire. The subjective results for the 225-45-17 combinations are going to sound very much like the 215s. On the 7-inch wide wheels, the 225s felt good, but they were the slowest to respond to inputs, and they understeered a touch more than the other options. The 225s on the 8 felt nicely balanced, with strong turn-in and alert steering. This combination would rotate predictably and was forgiving and easy to control at the limit. The 9-inch wheel option felt like a more solid foundation than the other two. Everything happened with more immediacy and more precision, and it could carry more speed before reaching the limit. Once again, breakaway was very abrupt, but it was easy to bring back in line. Looking at the objective results, we can see again that supporting the tire with adequate wheel width is very important, and the 225 on the 9 was the only combination that matched any of the 215s. A narrower contact patch helps with water evacuation and hydroplaning resistance, and even with our relatively low water depth, you can see the advantage of the 215 section with tires. Switching to the 245s was where we started to notice some odd subjective behavior. With the 245 on the 7, it was immediately noticeable that it could brake very well, and it actually had the shortest braking distances of the entire test. However, it did not like to be hustled through turns or rapid transitions. It was surprisingly easy to get into a tank slapper through the slalom, and the rear really wanted to step out due to the noticeable front-to-rear imbalance. On the 8s, the 245 was reasonably well-balanced. The rear end would still step out, but it wasn't as abrupt or unpredictable. The steering was more responsive, and the front end cornering traction felt a bit higher, but it couldn't match the braking capability of the 245 on the 7. Moving to the 245 on the 9, the steering was surprisingly a touch slower and more deliberate than on the 8. Lateral traction was strong, and where this combination really stood out was its ability to put the power down at corner exit. So let's see what all that translates to in terms of lap times. Well, the first thing you probably notice is all the 245s were pretty slow relative to most of the other options. The 225 on the 7 is down there too, but aside from that, the narrower tires were all way faster than the 245s. Within the group of 245s, the very strong braking of the 245 on the 7 helped it turn relatively decent times, and the 245 on the 9 used its ability to power away from turns to help set the fastest average laps of the 3. The 245 of the 8 didn't really excel at anything though, and it had the slowest wet laps in the whole test. So it's been three days of intense, fun testing. We've burnt up a lot of tires, all in the name of finding answers, of course, and we've come up with some pretty cool conclusions, actually. So we'll just jump straight into the dry, because I'm sure that's what most people are interested in. And there, the conventional wisdom has always been, just put the widest tire on the wheel that you can fit under the vehicle, because the thought is, you know, wider is always going to be faster. And our testing has shown that that's not the case. It's more important for the tire to be well supported by the wheel than the actual width of the tire itself. In fact, the 245 4017 on the seven inch wheel was the slowest spec out of any combination that we tested. Uh, technically, the 225 on the nine was the fastest combination, uh, but the 245 and the 225 both on nine inch wheels were kind of within the noise of our testing. So I'd say that they were basically equivalent. It's gonna you know, make people's heads explode that if we had a seven inch wheel, if we were limited to a seven inch wheel, I would absolutely recommend a 215 section with tire over a 245 section with tire for the dry. As far as subjective impressions are concerned, you know, there are some generalizations that we can draw. A pinched tire can be a little bit more forgiving than one that's stretched. Uh, the 215 on the 7, the 225 on the 7, they both had a little bit slower steering response, but they were, they were forgiving, they were benign. You could put the power down really, really well. And then as you move to the wider wheels on those, uh, the steering response got sharper, uh, but the breakaway also was a bit more abrupt. So it was a little bit more knife edged. Then when we put the 245 on the 7, all of that changed. That's a big pinch and it was kind of a mess to be completely honest. Through the slalom, the rear end wanted to move all over the place. It, you could get really get a tank slapper going, uh, you know, if you weren't careful. Uh, it just really didn't like to be hustled around the track. Uh, it was reasonably quick, but uh, it just it wasn't as satisfying to drive. 
Then when you moved up from the seven to the eight to the nine, interestingly, the, uh, the steering seemed to stay uh, pretty slow. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't quite as responsive as, say, the stretch tires. Where wet lap times were concerned, it was still very, very important for the tire to be well supported. You know, the 215 on the seven, the eight, and the nine all were faster in the wet than what the 245 was. The 215 versus the 225, they got pretty close to one another, but the 215 on the eight and the 215 on the nine, those were the two absolute fastest combinations that we had. They were very, very close, once again, kind of within the noise of our testing of one another, but it's just kind of, again, unexpected or, or goes against convention that, you know, the narrower tire is the faster option. Uh, it's a little bit different in the wet or maybe a little bit less unexpected in the wet um, just because of, of what people know about wet traction. Uh, but still, if, if you want to maximize your lap times in wet conditions, uh, a narrower tire that's well supported by the wheel is the way to go. Thanks for watching, and be sure to go to TireRack.com if you want more details on our test results. And if you want to see more test content like this in the future, be sure to leave your comments and suggestions below and like, share, and subscribe.